low model rail rotors. There, I finally got it out so it wasn't one garbled word anymore. <laughs> Welcome back to the layout. A uh, couple weeks since I posted the last video. Haven't uh, had a lot of time to work on the layout, but uh, what I have done, I'll give you a look. And uh, then a little bit of uh, booty that was acquired from a local train show today. So a little something to look forward to. So, uh, we're at the top level. There's the, the helix. It uh, follows down through around that corner. And this is where I'm currently at. So I'll take a step over from my, plat my uh, little step stool onto my working platform and bring you in closer to show you what I'm doing. Okay, previously the upper level I had ended at those two turnouts uh, pretty much at that module joint. So I've been able to run uh, the two curved lines around. Uh, the outer line is a 20 degree and the inner line is a uh, I'm going to say 23 degree uh, line uh, just so that it was a little easier uh, for the locos coming up uh, the helix a little easier on them uh, a little less uh, coupler stress uh, making that curve but uh, I did have to add in this other turnout because coming up I did want the option of it coming over Oops, sorry. And then that will run down the inner edge of the layout and then around uh, the inner edge on the peninsula and join back up uh, the entryway into where the, the foam is. But the main line uh, that will be uninterrupted, so to speak, apart from that joint over there, that turnout uh, that will get installed to pick up the other line. Uh, we'll be just running two parallel lines down the back wall all the way down and then when we get to the water effect I need to figure out how I'm going to how far in I'm going to run the track because I don't want the incoming train end to be seen with the engine exiting the uh, the return uh, kind of like what you've seen in previous videos down here when I'm using the going around the outside of the helix where you can see it entering and exiting uh, simultaneously uh, I don't really want to do that over here so I just have to decide if I'm going to both the incoming train on the right, on the inner side of the water effect, because uh, I'm going to put a block, a seam block up about halfway, which is a foot in, or if I'm going to run it on the wall side and put a second seam block on so that you can't see the train. I just haven't sorted that out yet in my head. Uh, for looks, I'm going to worry about that once I get the track going down that back wall because that's when I'm going to need to determine where I'm going to need to uh, put the one curve. The other curve will of course be closer to where those boxes are sitting on the far corner uh, for the outside return loop that is going that way. And I'm making use, as I've mentioned in a previous video, of which way the, the direction of travel is going and then which way my drops are to connect up to my bus line. So um, keeping that bound and that bound straight is my highest priority because I definitely don't want to uh, generate a short and have to pull track up to sort it out later. Um, nifty little hack uh, is using a couple of C-clamps and having a piece of plywood that that uh, adjustable lamp can uh, the base is screwed to and then you can just unbolt it and move it around the layout and I just plug it into a cord reel extension cord 
and uh, it's actually got a power switch on the cord rail itself so I just leave the light turned on and I just turn it on and off at the at the cord the cord rail and then I've just got a 100 watt LED bulb in there and I've actually though I don't know if it'll show it uh, at all I've actually taken the globe the diffuser globe off the LED because of course I'm not sticking my hand up there with the bell on it I know it's off I'm not going to electrocute myself uh, and that gives me undiffused intense light where I want it and then I can pull that around uh, as I need it. Now down the back stretch I am using 1 8 inch thick cork roll uh, where I've got it marked off at uh, 5 8 in from each side. That's my track center so that gives me a track center of uh, one and a quarter inches between the two tracks and I'm putting that uh, about one and a half inches off the uh, scene wall. Uh, I can never remember what to call that darn thing. Uh, the backdrop wall. So uh, which uh, points me out that I don't believe I've mentioned this piece of equipment. Uh, I picked it up at Home Depot. It's an Empire brand straight edge and it's two four foot sections as you can see by the uh, little joint here and this piece has a uh, I don't know what, to, what you would call it, angles that bite into the uh, ways on each piece and then it uh, screws in tight so it holds everything together. So I picked that up because I wanted a really good straight edge to, to go down when laying the track and uh, so far it's worked out very well. I've cut the track, uh, pardon me, I've cut the cork utilizing that straight edge and now I've made my marks and I've got some weights on each end as you can see some little lead weights that I've taped to a piece of angle, angled steel and uh, another weight which I have no idea what its original origin was but it's a nice good heavy weight <laughs> that's uh, about an inch and a half uh, uh, on each side and uh, so that allows me to do that. As a, For another weight I've got an old uh, battery backup battery that uh, gives me some extra weight and so uh, find it where you can. So, um, track wise, what uh, I use is this cordless Dremel tool and I think Canadian wise they're probably in the $40 range. Uh, rechargeable removable battery. Uh, right now with uh, Halloween coming up you can get this style where the battery will separate instead of being rechargeable you can put in uh, AA batteries so uh, that may be something worth uh, looking for and uh, I actually spike on my track I'm not too worried about seeing the spike heads I'm using a uh, microengineering I think that's a medium spike that uh, I just spike them down and uh, if possibly you can see um, see if I can zoom in with it still making some sense come on autofocus come on autofocus too blurry too blurry looks like that's probably as good as good as we're gonna get in uh, let me get something to point with there's a spike head, sorry, there's a spike head right there. So I just line the spike heads up with the ties and that as at a casual glance, there's another one, sorry, right there. Zoomed in having a little problem looking and holding the camera at the same time. Uh, that they just line up and uh, they kind of hide themselves that way. Now I don't know how it will look once it's ballast, but if it really bothers me, 
I can yank all the ties or the spikes out of the ties uh, after it's ballasted if it really bothers me but for now I'd rather have it secured down to the plywood than uh, than glue and it's a heck of a lot faster uh, to for me to drill a hole down and uh, using the fine uh, zircon uh, needle nose pliers I can just grab the spike pop it in there, it uh, pushes through the cork and starts into the hole. The bit, the uh, drill bit I use is uh, just essentially the same diameter as the uh, as the spike. I have no idea what number that is. Uh, but uh, and I just push it down with the uh, with the closed tips and uh, grab it and turn grab it and turn the, the head so that it's in line and I alternate every other the way the head's pointed every other hole. So that's uh, where I'm at now. Uh, hopefully within the next two weeks I'll have mainline track all the way down. As I said I'm not too worried about getting uh, the feeder lines that I've dropped down soldered in yet. Uh, I want to more focus on getting uh, the track in place. So let's go over to the uh, the sew, my wife's sewing area that I've commandeered uh, her cutting table because that's uh, here's another piece of the the cork cut with the lines drawn on it and then I'll just uh, take some double-sided carpet tape and cut them into strips I can't remember what the diameter is. I think it's like eight millimeters was easiest for me to uh, to do, and then I'll just run uh, a strip down each each side. And if really need be, then I'll run one down the uh, the middle also, and then that will hold the strips down. And then pinning the track with the nails down every uh, whatever four inches or whatever it is will. Uh, will lock the cork down so I don't have to worry about that.